And welcome back folks, welcome back to Let's Play The Dark Eye. <sighs> Last time, terrible things had happened when we killed an innocent old man and dismembered his dead body and hid it in our, well in his room actually, because we've played uh, the story The Telltale Heart from the perspective of the victim. So as you can see here, there's only one story left to go. Um, and then I think we will end this let's play. Um, but first of all, we should check whether we can find our uncle or our brother. I think this picture is new. Um, I suppose it it should have uh, picked Elise, even though it, well, it doesn't actually resemble her at all. So maybe um, that is in fact someone else. But let's check the canvas of our uncle. It still shows the saw that we saw. Ha ha ha. That we saw the saw that we saw. Well, we saw the saw that you see here. We saw the saw in the story The Telltale Heart. Okay, that was just terrible. Anyway, um, yeah, we not. Okay, I'm failing to maneuver around this house. Um, last time we also buried um, Elise in the family crypt. She should still lie here, um, even though I somehow have the suspicion that she has been buried alive. Um, and that will... oh. We actually cannot enter the crypt right now. Ah yeah, because the, her uncle has kept the key. Um, hmm. Okay, then we shall try to find our uncle, I guess. Um, hmm. So that was the room with the a fish that... Yeah, uh, led to a uh, story of the Telltale Heart. So I guess we're done here. We shall head upstairs. Um, just out of curious, curious, okay. We cannot, in fact, leave yet. Um, so we need to find, uh, yeah, something else, something else that has changed. Let us check our brother's room. Um, and he is not here, in fact. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Okay. So let us see. Ah, okay. So, um, we have played the story, the cast of Amantoliado from the perspective of the well, so the story, the cast of Amantoliado, we sort of played um, both from the perspective and the victim, but um, it was the same, yeah, the same level, so to speak. Um, whereas in the story of the Telltale Heart, it was very, it was really two different, um, yeah, game sequences that were accessed by different items in the game. And this is actually... Uh, yeah, we can't... Of course, yeah, I'm being silly here. We are, of course, still in the real world, so we cannot... Um, cannot choose our dream in any case. So we need to find something 
It will lead us into the dream world. Um, oh. She's alive. I know it. I'm not surprised, I must say. Um, but how do you know that she's alive? I can feel her blood flowing through the house. I hear her whisper. I hear her very heart. Uh, okay, but would you please uh, not stand so near that huge gap in the wall, or rather that wall that isn't there? Um. Ugh. I've pounded at the door to her vault. I swear, I hear rustling within. Do you understand? She lives. Hmm. And he's gone. So off. Uh, somehow. Okay. I suppose he just left. Um. Yeah, I assume he left. Okay. Oh, I just fell down this, um, this void. Ugh! Fuck. Your brother has lost his sanity. Not even Ambers can restrain him. I understand you carried messages between Elise and him. Then come, carry one more. I really do not trust him. I suspect him to, to be the villain of this game. Also, where... where oh, there you are. Henry is of an exceedingly sensitive nature. When such a man succumbs to delusions, it's best to bring him slowly around by way of that same delusion. He believes at least to be alive. Let him receive a letter from her. Are you insane? Deliver him this message. Let him believe it to be from Elise. Let him read by her own hand that she is no more. Um, no. I don't think so. Um, no. No, what? No. Fuck off, old man. Let's find our brother. I hope the game actually lets me make a choice here. Probably not. Um, and I think that we... I've never seen that perspective, in fact. Hmm. Interesting. Um, well, not actually interesting, but... Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, let us... He's not in here, so I would suspect that our brother is in the vo family vault. Um, just making sure. Yeah, and I hope I didn't break the game by not taking the letter from our uncle. Um, Yeah, probably we need to just, yeah, we have no choice here at all. Um, yeah, it's not so much of a game, really. More like an interactive fiction, which is not bad. I mean, this isn't a bad thing, necessarily, and I do like this game, but, well, it isn't really a game. It's more like interactive fiction. Um... Yeah, or what you would now call it a walking simulator, sort of, sorts of. Okay, let's give me that letter. Let's read it. And our uncle still has that letter, even though he just gave it to us, which makes sense, I guess. Okay. My dearest Henry, my dearest, dearest Henry, you alone have felt my lingering presence in this pl you alone have felt my lingering presence in this house 
I must see you. Please, please, meet me on the path below the cliff just after dark. Please, my love, Elise. Uh, are you actually trying to murder my brother? Because it very much seems like you do. Uh, hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, the game uh, really does not seem to give us any choice at all. Okay, let us try to find our brother once again. I do. Okay, I would guess he's in the vault. Um, in the vault now, at least. He hasn't been before. I mean, not in the vault, but at least... Okay, he's not here. Hmm. Okay, how about in his room? Uh Ah, there he is. Okay. You must help me. Uh okay, I think I will do so by clicking on your body. After dusk. It's after dusk now. Uh you do not question the fact that you just received a letter from a dead person. Well, he thinks she's alive, but... I mean, even if she was alive, she would still lie in that family crypt. So... Yeah. But... Hmm. It doesn't seem... to be that... Um, precise in that regard. Well... I guess he's... I mean, I guess he's overwhelmed by emotion, so that actually makes kind of sense. Um, yeah, and I must say that this game has really stood the test of time in terms of, um, well, graphics, in fact. I do think that these graphics, um, even today, they look they look good. Um, I mean, not, of course not photorealistic, but... Um, it, it's just an art... Yeah, an art style that makes sense. I tried to follow. My haste made me clumsy. Okay, I think we'll... Yeah, getting very close to the end of this game. Um, Finally, I emerged into the night. Elise! Elise! Elise, it's Henry! Elise, are you there? In, in the distance, I could hear my brother crying out. Elise, are you there? Elise! Elise, answer me! In the bright moonlight, I could see the rise and swell of the ocean from afar. The wave collected itself into a vast wall of destruction, then, then seemed to hesitate, poised in the then, with a terrific crash, the full force of the sea met the cliff face, shattering the calm of the night, surely forever. Miraculously, Henry had escaped. He lay panting on the cliff edge, then rose to survey the scene of his near demise. As I watched him, I saw a second silhouette emerge from the brush behind. And returned and pronounced the name I dared not utter. Elise? But it was not Elise. Hmm. 
guy kind of looked like a servant of our uncle, in fact. Hmm. Yeah, but I'm not surprised that this didn't end well. Um. My wrath falls with certainty. Your brother was driven to insanity by breathing paint fumes from a lantern. You carried messages for them. You sang and flirted with her. You tried to save him. Oh. I guess it's time. Time for the final dream. A dream bringing the end, bringing the conclusion to the story. So, from what I can, um, as far as I understand, um, our uncle just admitted that he murdered our brother. Hmm. Is this going to be it? I mean... Yeah, this we... Yeah, this we already uh, have explored. Um, trying to think of... Trying to think of something that... Um, Of some room. That could lead to. Um, to the final dream. Ah. Yeah of course. The only place in this house that has been of complete and utter. Uh, Non-use. That's not even a word. But anyway. Has been the, the top. Um. It is. It's this place just pointless after all. Um, it seems like. Hmm. Okay, it's pointless, okay. Hmm. Yeah, this also hasn't changed. Um, how about Elise's room? Also, I think... No, actually... It would make sense if it was in Henry's room. Uh, but there are no items in here. Hmm. Uh, uh, give me a moment and then I'll have figured out how we enter, yeah, the last dream sequence.
Um, I think this could have could be the final and uh, the entrance to the final dream. Let's find out. Hmm, I think this is, this is actually, yeah, the final dream. So we're now starting off as Fortunato. There is, um, I actually forgot his name. Um, so the character that we were playing as before. The agreements are in place. Tomorrow is the day. Ciano, how I've waited for this moment. We'll be rich beyond imagination. One interesting fact about this game is that apparently you can really um, you can play these dreams in any order. And the story just progresses with each dream. But it doesn't matter which dream it is that unlocks the next stage. Which it's interesting, in a way. Give her some wine. It's a lovely sauterne. Mm. Actually, I just had some wine before I started this Let's Play. Curious fact. Young, straightforward, rather blunt, drinkable. <laughs> and there's her. Signore Fortunato, I've been waiting for you to call on me at my villa. I've been waiting for your husband to leave town. Shame on you. <laughs> Actually, that, that, that lady has one of the worst Italian accents, fake Italian accents I have ever heard. Oh, nice to see you. <laughs> I'd wait till she could scratch on the storm. Nothing like a few welts to remind one of a night of passion. Hmm, that was new. Uh, that piece of conversation that we just had. Wonderful costume, Signore Fortunato. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> can I get anything for you? It would be an honor. Anything at all. Hmm. That medallion must be worth a thousand florins. You must be cheating me. So I would suppose it, that is actually uh, our servant. That was me. Uh, meat. Okay, how do I actually get... onto the main street? Uh, kind of stuck here. Do I have to talk to the guy again? Oh, of course. Yeah. We just... Are we not click on our... Okay, I'm... Ah, I have to wrap her again. Getting a little frisky. <laughs> I'd wait till she could scratch on the storm. Nothing like a few welts to remind one of a night of passion. Hmm. And he repeated that line for no apparent re for no apparent reason. Um. Oh, nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> 
Hmm. Ah, I can talk to her. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Okay, that's all you're going to say. Ha 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 ha. Okay, can I now click on him? Yes. Look, sir, a bit like Montresor. Whatever became of him? Uh, didn't you two have some dealings? I suppose we did. Bit of a wet blanket, Montresor. Ah, yeah, Montresor, of course. Um, oh, we have to click on our servant. No, we don't. In fact. Okay, can we finally get down to this? Rich. Rich. Hmm. Ah, finally. Okay. Uh, no, I won't. Okay. When will they clear the streets of these scoundrels? They should be chained up. I don't like the fact that they reuse so much material of the um, of the story when he played from the perspective of Montessor. Oh, who's that? Oh, Montessor, it's you. Fortunato. What a surprise. <laughs> it's a lovely party, isn't it? My celebration has just begun. Hmm. I mean, it's the carnival, carnival in Venice. It's not really a party. Just saying. Okay. Anyway, and we have that. My dear Fortunato, I wonder if you could help me. How can I help you? I've bought a small cask of what passes for a Montiado, but I have my doubts. A Montiado? Lucchese has a discerning palate. Perhaps he could take a sip. Hmm. I'm a little bit confused as to why we are still playing from the perspective of Montres of Fortunato. Um. Bah! Who Casey can't tell a Montiato from Gutter Water? Let's go. Where? To your vaults. Let us go. Okay, I've get the. I'm getting the feeling that I actually, when I played it from the other perspective, I didn't. Well, I sort of made a mistake and clicked on the face of Fortunato and thereby switched to the other perspective. Meaning that um, from now on, the dream sequence or this, yeah. Whatever it is, this dream sequence will be exactly as we have already experienced it. So, um, I will retrospectively either make a cut now, if that should be the case, or we'll go to yeah, watch the rest of this. So, And we are back from the uh, dream sequence. Um, yeah, as it turned out, we just, it was just the same story. So, um... Okay, my theory is um, that you can actually play the story from the perspective of Montresor only. Um, so we'll, we'll re-enter the dream, yeah, once again. And I will try um, to avoid switching to the perspective of um, Fortunato. So if it should turn out that my theory is not correct and will just be the same dream sequence again then I will make a cut um, right now I'm a, I will make a cut now okay this if you're watching this then it means I haven't made a cut and it actually is possible to play from the perspective of, of perspective of, uh, of blah, blah, blah. Montresor Okay, let's find out whether that is the case.
Revenge means nothing, unless the Avenger makes himself known to his victim. Of course, when one takes revenge, one wants to take it slowly. One wants to be avenged at length. Yeah, we already heard that several times now. By now. Um, yeah, and apparently Venice just ends there. Or they were just too lazy to add more houses. Probably the latter. Um... I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. It is a poor vengeance that also harms the Revenger. Let's talk to our servant. Sir? Return to the villa. Tell the livery that I shall be out all night. They are forbidden to leave the house. Yes, sir. Immediately, sir. Hmm. Hmm, that will ensure their immediate disappearance, now that my back is turned. Let us proceed. Excuse me, sir. I'm attendant upon Signora Fortunato. She's searching for her husband. Have you seen him? Oh, I'm certain I saw him some streets from here. Over on the other side of the square. Engaged in a business discussion. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um. <clears throat> hmm. Ah. Uh. It really does seem that. Yeah, there. The game. Okay, this is. I must say, this is a bit of a letdown that. Um, for this story, the cask of Amontillado, they didn't really. They didn't really let you play from the perspective of the killer. At least only the very beginning of the story, and then it just defaults to. You being, uh, yeah, Fortunato. For years I've suffered his injuries, but now he has ventured upon insult. Uh. Hmm. Okay, I wonder... So I, did, so I waited now, I wonder with whether when I click now, it will still change to, to the perspective of Fortunato. It doesn't. Interesting. So maybe it is after all possible to play from the perspective of Montresor. Excuse me, aren't you Montresor? I'm afraid I don't know that gentleman. Hmm. Fair enough. Oh, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Mm. Okay, we can't talk to him. Who's that under the mask? Why, it's Montresor. 
Fortunato. What a surprise. My dear Fortunato, I wonder if you could help me. I've bought a small cask of what passes for Amontillado, but I have my doubts. Amontillado? But I have my doubts. Hmm. Yeah, I do apologize that I just claimed that the game would let you play this story only from the perspective of one person. Yeah, apparently it does also let you play from the perspective of Montresor and I just was too stupid to realize. Yeah, the game mechanics. A cast, Montresor, and in the middle of carnival. Impossible. I have my doubts. I was foolish enough to pay full price without consulting Fortunato in the matter. Hmm. <laughs> Lucchese has a discerning palate. Perhaps he could take a sip. Bah, Lucchese can't tell a Montiero from gutter water. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, nice to see Christ. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's just, yeah, doing her laugh. <laughs> Who's that? No one, Signora. No one at all. Hmm. Can I now talk to Fortunato again? No. Um. I was yet. Okay, how can I talk to that person there that just disappeared? Let's go. Who said that? Where? To your vaults. But surely your wife is looking for you. She'll see me soon enough. Let us go. Okay, I'm very, very... Um Streets go dangerous at this hour. We will soon arrive at the safety of my villa. I'm very curious as to how this story will play from the perspective of Montresor because I. Yeah, let's. We're, we're going to find out, won't we? My friend, this is madness. You are afflicted with a severe cold. The vaults are insufferably damp. They are encrusted with nitre. Let us return. I'll consult Lucchese. The cold is nothing. Lucchese is an ignoramus. Mm. A place much more linear, lin linearly now. I suspect... This way. I suspect this is because... Yeah... They didn't want to do it so much animation, so they made it so that you can't actually, or you can actually look at Fortunato. Um, okay, it's a bit weird that now I'm holding the the light, and Fortunato has vanished. Come, we will go back. Your health is precious. You are rich, respected, admired, beloved. You are happy, as I once was. You are a man to be missed. 
For me, it's no matter. <sighs> cough is nothing. It won't kill me. I won't die of a cough. True. True. Yeah, we all know how you're going to die. <laughs> This way. Hmm. Okay, I'm lost again. <coughs> Enjoy. It will still the car. Ah, oh, I. I can touch him. No, I'm not going to play from the perspective of the victim. Thank you. Hmm. I really don't know why the game would let you change to the perspective of the victim. <laughs> Whereas you can't change to the perspective of the perpetrator when you are playing from the perspective of the victim. So there's a certain asymmetry there. It doesn't make much sense. Okay, you can't comment on these skeletons. <coughs> and did I mention the fact that I'm lost again? Along here. Ah. Uh, ah. I think we've found it. Therein lies the Amontillado. The Amontillado. <laughs> Looks quite goofy with that costume. Let's chain him up. <laughs> Actually, what's this? You have been chained up, monsieur. And I hope I do hope that my video recording software didn't glitch out because there was some something flashing over the screen. It is very damp here. One last time, let me implore you to return. No? Then I must leave you. But first. Yeah, let's get our chisel. And uh, that's cool. You actually have to physically um is it doing in hmm. um game? Ah Joke. We'll have many laughs about it at the Palazzo over some wine. The Amontillado. Yes! <laughs> the Amontillado! <laughs> hmm. It's getting late. My wife will be looking for me. Let us be gone! Yes, let us be gone. For the love of God, Montessor! Yes, for the love of God. Ok, 
Okay, let's get the... Oh. Hmm. Okay. He said something, but then I think the audio got interrupted. My heart grows sick. It's due to the dampness. Pace requies cut. Okay. And we're here. No pestilence has ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood is its avatar and its seal. The redness and the horror of blood. Curious. Very curious. Okay, I think I see now what the game is doing here. For me, the celebration has just begun. of the lantern, the madness-inducing fumes, Henry's premonitions. All these came clear to me at once, and I could feel and hear a great rending, as of a mirror breaking, roll throughout the house, growing in volume and strength. And even as I looked on, the house around us, the vault, the lantern, Elise, her bloody eyes, all shattered, shattered into a hundred thousand shards, Shattered as did the dark depths of my very soul. It's not... Um... And that was it, folks. That was the Dark Eye. Um... Yeah, written by Russell Lee. Yeah, it's... The credits go a bit, uh, roll a bit too fast to read it out. Okay, that's the people that worked on this game. Um, okay, first of all, thank you. Uh, I mean, thank you developers who put, yeah, all the efforts, the obvious effort uh, into this game and created such a... Yeah, unique and beautiful experience. Um, the ending was a bit, yeah, un incoherent. Um, but overall, it was it was very good. Um, some things okay, there. Okay, some minor points like um, uh, to criticize here, like. That um, the sound levels often were a bit um, 
were a bit off, so that that like the music was too loud, and the speech was too too um, was not loud enough. And also, I didn't, I really didn't like the voice acting of William Asperos. It was, it sounded very lazy. Um, but apart from that, it was, yeah. It was a very interesting experience, um, not so much of a game, an experience that even today um, looks very good um, and was able to touch me, to grip me on an emotional level, um, especially the scene, the sequence where uh, we were playing the story um, Berenice from the perspective of Berenice. That was very, yeah, very gripping. Um, we actually have the ability to replay all this, all these stories now that we've completed the game. I don't think I will do that. Um, but this, yeah, it was a very enjoyable experience. This was the Dark Eye. I am the Elevator Simulator. Thanks for watching and yeah, until next time, folks. Um, till then.